please welcome to the stage Executive Director of the Linux Foundation, Jim Zemlin. Hello, good afternoon. Um, we, for those of you in the back, uh, we've got a few seats over here, and I think we have some over here. We're kind of tight on seating here. So if you have someone trying to get in, please allow them to get in. Uh, welcome to the uh, Open Networking Summit 2017. We've got a great lineup this week, an amazing set of speakers and content and hackathons and uh, all sorts of good stuff, uh, and it's a tremendous year. I'd like to first start by thanking our sponsors, uh, Intel uh, at, as our diamond sponsor, uh, platinum sponsors, Amdocs and Huawei, uh, and our gold sponsors, Dell, EMC, uh, and uh, Ericsson. Um, another quick announcement, if you need any assistance, please contact the registration desk. We have lots of different tracks going on. If you get a little bit confused, uh, go ahead and uh, ask them for help. Uh, so I thought I would spend a few minutes at the opening here uh, talking a little bit about where we are as an industry and about some of the things that have been going on in 2017 in uh, open source and networking. And I want to start by saying, uh, and tipping the hat to John Gage of Sun Microsystems uh, a long time ago, that after 25 years, this is now actually true. Uh, the network really is the computer. And my favorite story about this is one that was relayed to me actually last week by a gentleman named Min Jun, who's at Facebook. Uh, he works on their telecom infrastructure project, which is a, a really cool uh, open source project around telecom infrastructure. He said that at Facebook, you have this six-month boot camp where all the engineers who work there come in, they take this six-week uh, boot camp, and they learn all about Facebook's infrastructure. And then after that six weeks, they go and sort of find a home in the different groups within Facebook, you know, whether on the application side or whatever. And a few years ago, nobody wanted to go over to the network engineering side. But that now, that really the network is where all the action is happening. It's programmable. It really is this incredibly dynamic, software-driven piece of their infrastructure that tons of engineers now want to go there. And I think the same thing is happening uh, across the industry, that the network now is this rich, managed, programmable uh, orchestration tool that's driving so much of cloud computing. And open source is certainly a huge part of that. Just at the Linux Foundation, we've seen an explosion in the last five years, the number of open source projects uh, around the networking sector. Uh, our most recent project, the Open Network Automation Platform, uh, is a management and orchestration platform that is in production at companies like AT&T. In fact, the Open Network Automation Platform, this MANO project that we have, it's, it's even bigger than MANO, is, uh, has representatives from China Mobile, China Telecom, China Ucom, Bell Canada, AT&T, and others, essentially representing 40% of the world's mobile subscribers. This is open source code, production grade, and I can kind of keep on going. And it's not just at the Linux Foundation. Open source is all over the place, whether it's at the Open Compute Project, at the hardware level, I already mentioned the Telecom Infrastructure Project, things like the Open Source Mono Project, the Open Networking Foundation, you name it. There is lots and lots of code out there for everyone to play with and build really interesting solutions around. And today we're welcoming another project to uh, our roster. Uh, the DPDK project is now uh, housed at the Linux Foundation. Uh, we have a big set of supporters who are backing that project that we're announcing today. And you can see, uh, and you will see even more work going on here to uh, allow for data plane service acceleration through this important critical project now at a neutral home at the Linux Foundation. We're also announcing Free Range Router, an IP routing protocol suite for Linux and Unix platforms. It is home now at the Linux Foundation. Uh, and you can go to our website to find out more about this exciting process, project and all of the investment that will help uh, there too. So all of this is good. We've got a lot of code out there, but it does create a problem. Lots of code, but not a lot of time. You see, there are millions of open source projects out there, right? I mean, it's not just in, even in networking, it's at every layer of the stack. GitHub alone hosts 54 million 
open source projects. The real question for all of you is, there are all these projects, there's all this code, the real question is, which ones really matter? Which ones should I invest my time in? Which ones should I invest my career in? Which ones should I take a meaningful commercial dependency upon? That is the real question that we want to talk about this week at ONS in particular around networking. And at the Linux Foundation, we think that projects that you can bank on, whether it's in networking or anywhere else, are projects that have sustainable ecosystems. This is the thing that you should be looking for. An ecosystem where you have a really good developer community from a diverse set of stakeholders who create great code, provide true value, which creates profit if you're a company and you use that code. It could be cost savings. If you're a government, it could be transparency. And then that value creation is then reinvested back into the project. It looks like this. This is what all of the networking projects, whether it's Onos, Cord, Open Daylight, uh, OPNFV, you name it, at the Linux Foundation are all looking to achieve this same thing, working with the industry and developers to create sustainable projects that will endure for a very, very long time. And so the big theme for this week is how do we overcome the remaining challenges in the networking ecosystem to create these sustainable ecosystems? Well, the number one thing is it's the code. Without good code, you're not gonna have any outcome at all. We still need to keep our eyes on building developer communities around all these projects that will solve really tough problems with really well-written code. But in addition to that, we need to harmonize these projects. That's one of the big themes this week at ONS, is how do we harmonize up and down the stack? If we have you know, three or four different projects at every, whether it's at data plane services or all the way up to mono, how do we harmonize those? How do we create a set of common APIs, configuration language, and so forth, so that this code works more effectively as a broad solution as opposed to an individual piece part? And it's not just that. The industry is going through a big cultural change. This is most predominant in the networking sector. You know, I was just at Mobile World Congress, and I met with over 50 organizations. It was an incredible week. And none of those organizations, whether it was a uh, global operator or a uh, product vendor or a cloud service provider, wanted to talk about specific technology. They all wanted to talk about change management. How do I retrain the 20,000 network admins that I employ today to be software-defined networking uh, DevOps professionals? How do I teach them how to code? How do I teach them about this new technology? How do I retrain? restructure my workforce to do that. This is going to be a critical challenge for, in particular, the networking sector because it's sort of over-invested in a way that will be challenging to convert to this new SDN world. So that's one of the things we really want to focus on and we're going to talk a lot about at this event. In addition, we need to continue to teach organizations how to manage open source how to participate in these communities, both from a technical perspective, but also from a legal and a business process perspective. How do you pull code in, share what you want to share, keep what you want to keep, how do you make that process work? This is something that we really want to focus on and will help us build this great shared technology asset together. And then finally, the last thing we need to do in networking that we're going to be talking about a bunch this week is harmonizing the process of standard setting and open source development. Open source development is now one of the leading ways where we create code that interoperates across a wide variety of networks, but standards will still be critically important. And you're gonna hear from the folks at the Linux Foundation about efforts we are working on with the Metro Ethernet Forum, with IEEE, with other standard setting bodies to make sure that standards and code can exist harmoniously. These are big things that if we do them, we can build an incredibly strong shared technology asset for networking. And so I hope you enjoy this event this week. I hope you learn a lot, and we hope to see you back again next year. I want to thank you for attending and introduce our next speaker, uh, who is a very special person. Uh, many of you know him. Come on up, the uh, executive director of uh, ONF Guru Palakar. Good to see you. Guru, before you get started, 
Before you get started, we actually have a surprise uh, for Guru. That's right. Come on out. So, Guru, I, I, many of you probably know this if you've been attending ONS for life, but this is the guy who started uh, the Open Networking Summit years ago. Uh, but more than that, Guru has really been one of the people who has driven the concept of SDN throughout the, inter uh, the industry. A tireless uh, engineer, supporter, architect, leader, uh, he really, can, it can be said that he's one of the founders of this movement. And in recognition of years of work, we wanted to give you this small token of our gratitude. Oh my God, I Please did. give a hand to Guru <laughs> Pollaker. Thank you, that is, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Very nice of you, really appreciate it. Uh, I didn't expect, I didn't know this, so I'm really touched and yep. really appreciate uh, what you've done. All right, you have to hold that your entire talk. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank, thank you, Gary. Thanks. Okay, uh, again, uh, thanks Linux Foundation and Jim. Uh, so uh, again, good afternoon and welcome to 2017 uh, Open Networking Summit. Uh, as Jim mentioned that we have a very exciting program for you for the next three, three and a half days where we will try to showcase all the progress we have been making as a community in uh, open networking, open source SDN and NFV uh, and so on. What I want to do is to take a few minutes uh, to talk about the ONS journey and the SDN journey so far and what to expect going forward. Okay, so as Jim mentioned, um, actually Nick McEwen, Dan Pitt and myself uh, started Open Networking Summit in 2011 at uh, Stanford University. And then last year um, uh, we agreed uh, uh, to make Open Networking Summit a part of Linux Foundation as open networking was becoming more and more about open source. And so that was the right thing to do. And this year we completed the transition and you can see that this year it is completely a Linux Foundation event. Uh, during all these years, uh, ONS has remained as the premier SDN open networking, open source networking event uh, for all this time. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you all uh, for all your support as well as participation in Open Networking Summit for all these years. Also, more importantly, I want to both congratulate you and thank you for all the progress we have been making as a community about open networking, open source, SDN, NFV, and so on, as Jim mentioned. Uh, I also want to, of course, th thank Jim and Linux Foundation for taking over ONS and taking it forward in a significant way. There is one more person that I want to uh, specially acknowledge. Her name is Sadef Askan. I don't know whether she's here in the audience. So she has been uh, my partner in Open Networking Summit for all these years uh, and responsible for ONS operations. And I could not have done ONS uh, without her. And maybe part of this uh, whatever award I got from Linux Foundation belongs to her as well. Okay, so with that, let me turn my attention to the SDN journey. So until a few years ago, uh, our industry can be best described or defined by what can be thought of as closed, proprietary, and vertically integrated systems uh, that inhibits innovation and that made, uh, that contributed to network operators, high capex and opex, and network operators' inability to create new services and create new revenue streams for them, okay? Uh, as Jim already mentioned, we have made tremendous progress during the past several years, um, and that progress can be best described or ident uh, defined by disaggregation, disaggregation of networking devices, softwareization and virtualization, that is programmable control planes, programmable forwarding planes, as well as network virtualization and network function virtualization. And finally, of course, open source, emergence of many, many open source components and open source platforms. And another way to look at this, and I think Jim already covered this very well, but at the bottom most, we have merchant silicon, which can give you very high performance, but as well as can give you programmability. Then we have these white boxes with open source component that can be used in production networks, then you know, SDN controllers, then network orchestration and management, and then all kinds of virtual network functions and services, some open, some closed. Okay, now 
so far when we think about disaggregation and open source, we think of it in terms of data centers and cloud providers. It is true that that is where disaggregation and open source started and have the biggest adoption so far. But to me, the most exciting and most interesting thing about open source and open networking is this particular trend of disaggregation and open source is taking hold in all these markets that you see. And that is together is pretty big and very significant and offers a lot of opportunities and challenges as well. Okay, but as also Jim also mentioned, right, when you look at all this disaggregation, when you look at all these open source platforms, and you think about yourself as a network operator or even a vendor, if you want to build integrated solutions and deploy them in the production setting, doing that with all these building blocks and all these open source components is, represents a significant challenge. And I will say that is our grand challenge for our industry today. So what we need more than anything today, Jim already mentioned about harmonization, and that is definitely very, very important. Uh, another thing that we need to do is to now think about how we can build integrated solutions that can leverage network device disaggregation and many open source platforms and deliver an integrated solution that is easy to consume and easy to deploy. And finally, again, as Jim also mentioned, we need software defined standards that make it easier to plug and play as well as provide interoperability among all these different open source building blocks. Okay, now if you don't mind, I want to quickly tell you about what this open networking or new open networking foundation is doing, which is a combination of ONF and the open networking lab. What we are trying to do is our mission is to help network operators and service providers transform their infrastructure into a platform for service innovation, because that's what they are wanting to do, that's what we want to make it happen. But by leveraging this network disaggregation, open source platforms, as well as software defined standards. And what we want to do is to help build integrated solutions that are easy to consume and deploy, and then drive them through lab trials, to field trials, to production deployment, okay? And as we do that, we have an opportunity to build what we are calling software-defined standards because once we have operational software and we are putting together in solutions and we are putting together with other open source building blocks, we have an opportunity to define these standards that specify either APIs, data models, information models about how you can plug these open source components together. And that's what the opportunity and what we are trying to do. And finally, the idea is that if you are a vendor or a company, we want to make it easier for you to plug your innovation into this end-to-end -end open innovation pipeline and make it easier to move that innovation all the way into customer's production network um, with significantly reduced R&D investment as well as um, a significantly lower time to market. And that is the kind of value proposition we want to bring to the vendors. Now, I want to give you a few examples. The good news is that at Open Networking Lab and Open Networking Foundation, there are few open innovation pipelines that are already in place for a few big markets like broadband residential access, mobile access, enterprise wide area network, and packet optical networks. Okay, so if you look at the work we have been doing with ONAS and CORD and some of the use cases and solutions that we have been building, it turns out that we have created multiple open innovation pipeline. As an example, if you look at residential CORD, in residential CORD, if you look at the hardware infrastructure, we bring white boxes for OLT devices for GPON. We use white boxes for leaf spine fabric. We use, of course, servers, those are white boxes. We build a coherent hardware infrastructure. On top of that, if you look at the software stack, that software stack is built with many open source building blocks, all the way from OpenStack, Docker, uh, ONOS as an SDN controller, then um, XOS, and then many virtual network functions that are implemented as services that are managed and orchestrated by this XOS platform. 
So, and we are already putting this all together in a solutions form, and some of this is going through lab trial and field trial, and hopefully in a production deployment in multiple service providers before end of the year. We are doing the same thing for mobile cord, applying that to radio access network, mobile packet core, as well as um, the mobile edge computing. Okay, and then we are doing something similar for uh, enterprise card and the packet optical networks as well. So we have the multiple innovation pipeline that are creating solutions that are easier to deploy. Now, clearly ONF is not doing this in isolation. We have brought two large ecosystems, ecosystems of ONF and Open Networking Lab. There are like 200 companies with number of leading service providers, system vendors, chip vendors, software vendors, system integrators that are all coming together and working together uh, on this particular uh, thing. And the idea is that we want to help service providers create platform, turn their network into platform for service uh, innovation. And we want to help vendors take their innovation and move it into production network of their customers very quickly by reducing R&D cost as well as time to market. Okay, now all of this is well and good, but there are a couple of challenges that we are still experiencing. The first thing is when you talk about taking something to production readiness and deploying something all the way into the production network, there's a significant amount of investment and skills that are required. Okay, and when you look at many open source projects, including open source projects that are going on at, for example, ONF or other places, we are able to create enough proof of concept, lab trials, maybe a couple of deployment, but that is it. If you really want to do this for production, you need significantly more investment and you need significant resources and you can see there is a resource gap. And the question is, who is going to make this investment? Where is, how are we going to plug this resource gap? Especially given that there seems to be a major misalignment of uh, in, uh, incentives. If you look at network operators, yes, they want to build open source SD and NFV networks, obviously, right? Building network disaggregate, leveraging network disaggregation, open source and all of that. However, they don't necessarily have enough development resources and they don't have uh, investments to make to be able to do it on their own. Now, if you look at vendors, yes, they have established products, they have um, you know, processes, they have revenue stream, they have large pools of developers, but this whole network disaggregation and open source is quite disruptive to their business model. Now, system integrators, they see a lot of opportunity with network disaggregation and open source, but again, they don't have necessarily the expertise, resources, and uh, investment to be able to make this work. So what that means is that if the incentives are not aligned, that leads to insufficient investment. That means we cannot take some of this to real production deployment and really bring about the change we want to make. So that is something to think about because as much as we are excited about all the progress we have made, this is something to be uh, thinking about. So my last slide. So what you have is, yes, we have made tremendous progress with disaggregation, softwareization, and virtualization, open source. And we have a lot of exciting work ahead of us in terms of harmonizing integrated solutions and all that. But what we have to keep in mind is we have to find a way to align incentives, create sufficient investment, and that will lead to production deployment. And that is the only way we are going to really bring about the kind of change we all are here for and what we hope for. And again, at Open Networking Summit over the next three, three and a half days, hopefully you will see some of this in action. Uh, so come and check out. And then of course, you will get to talk about some of these issues as well. So again, thank you so much. Really appreciate your participation. Our next speaker is Arpit um, Joshipura, who is new to Linux Foundation. He will introduce himself. Thank you. All right. Uh, excited to be at the Linux Foundation and your host for this ONS. Uh, let me tell you what we did when we joined, or when I joined the Linux Foundation. We took, you know, I've been in your position. I've been, uh, you know, sat right where Michael sat. <laughs> uh, I have been an attendee. I have been a participant, an exhibitor, a sponsor, a keynote speaker. Okay, so I understand what we need as an audience. And so we went back and looked at all your feedback, and so of all the six years. And so this ONS is designed 
based on that, okay? Uh, and let me tell you why we believe networking is cool again, okay? Uh, let's go and first tell you who is here, okay? And my goal today is just to tell you how you can make your time efficient. That's it. I'm not giving any pitches, okay? Uh, there's an equal representation from service providers, also known as carriers, uh, cloud, and enterprise. We have about half and half technical as well as business architecture. In terms of the attendee power in the audience, we have a third that work and the other two thirds that make decisions. Okay? Uh, not quite, but that's, that's kind of just the breakdown. Okay? Uh, let, me, let me tell you a little bit more. All of the major enterprise verticals are represented. Like this is the first ONS where we have proactively requested a lot of enterprise presence. And you can see why. There's a lot of convergence between cloud, enterprise, carriers, right? The boundaries are blurring. So we have the top enterprise verticals, whether it's financial, manufacturing, healthcare, business, et cetera. Of course, all the vendors who supply to the enterprises are here. We have keynote speak speeches from the top cloud providers. We have the carrier infrastructure vendors, in fact, all of them. We have the top five service providers here, and most importantly, as, as Jim alluded to, in the audience, you know, if, if we don't align properly, half of the global mobile subs will be impacted. That's the power of this room. So the quality of people we have today is just outstanding. So take advantage of that in the hallway conversation and, and make sure you sort of at least ping your neighbor on, on, on what they do, okay? Let me give you a sneak peek at some of the keynotes. They are insightful and visionary. If you need to understand the role of networking and how, 129 billion transactions are carried out just wait for 30 minutes. Justin will be here. And then we have all the buzzwords. Containers, 5G, IoT. So let me tell you, one progress as a community we should all be proud of is in the next two years, all our acronyms have moved from three letters to two letters. Okay? <laughs> AI, BI, CI, VR, AR, you know, you name it. 5G. Okay? So that, you should all give yourself a round of applause for that. Just kidding. <laughs> um, we have... Um, Another very interesting vertical represented here. What does network do to transport all these passengers? Right? I mean, we all travel, but how do, how, what's the data center networking's role? Listen to that, right? I mean, this is a very different perspective. And it's not just VLANs and IP addresses and you know, port numbers. We've done that before. We've all been geeks, OK? There's another one. Networking is used, and this is open source networking, in molecular analysis to solve cancer. Right? This is very interesting. How do you do that? Right? Get them behind the stories from how do two of the largest world operators come together, AT&T and China Mobile. Jim mentioned the ONAP project. One thing is the architecture, but the other thing is, is the culture. Right? How do you bring those communities together? And of course, you'll hear a lot about 5G, okay? One key takeaway, if you remember nothing else, 5G mandates network automation. You can't have a smart meter on a call with an operator trying to register on a network, okay? It's not gonna happen. So just remember that, and there's a lot of that uh, over, over the course of the session. All right, as far as the tracks are concerned, it's a very simple algorithm. There are five tracks. Depending on your in inclination, you can either go to a general track. These are you know, hardware and ASICs and security and you know, basic common building blocks. Or you can take a carrier track or an enterprise cloud track. And within that, you are either a developer or you are a product management CTO architecture. So, Effectively, that's a two by two plus an additional track. So feel free to, again, you can cross boundaries, but we have adjusted it so that 
you know, you, it, it doesn't compete with itself. And of course, morning and evening we'll have keynotes, okay? Beyond that, we already started with a hackathon that's going to go through the day, so do visit that. Educational tracks, I saw most of them, they were like full standing room only. A um, lot of meetups, a lot of summit, a lot of mini summits. Exhibits are going to open shortly, and you know, it's the most visited thing. There's awards reception, you know, you name it. So last slide I want to sort of show is there's a lot of announcements that will go on. But from a networking perspective and an open source networking, which is what sort of I own, uh, we're very really proud to sort of uh, announce today one of our leading operators, Reliance Geo, from India. This is the fastest growing, largest 4G LTE network, over 100 million subscribers. They just joined ONAP. And just stay tuned. I know I've gotten a lot of questions on when ONAP is going to be open to the community. We're just doing a rebranding, you know, naming change. Just stay tuned. Uh, it, it, it's happening. The other piece of announcement, for those of you who are working on OPNFV and the Danube release, let me tell you, it's flowing quite well this week. Okay? And then Jim already covered the uh, DPDK and the uh, free range routing. So with that, what I wanted to do was bring up two keynotes this afternoon. And while I introduce my first keynote, I wanted to tell you that true to the tradition of ONS, this is the only conference you know, I've been to and I, I support where you can ask questions in keynotes. Okay? So if nobody stands up, we'll cancel that privilege. So I'm hoping that people would have, there are mics in the middle, just line up and ask the questions to the presenters. Uh, anything goes, just don't pitch your product, but otherwise anything goes. Um, and, and so with that said, let me introduce our first uh, keynote speaker. Um, we all know him, so no introduction required. CVP from Microsoft Azure Networking, Albert Greenberg. <laughs> 